Welcome to Movie Insight Global, today I am going to explain the American post-apocalyptic action-adventure film called Oblivion. Spoilers ahead. Watch and enjoy. The premise of the movie is set in the year 2077. An alien species called the Scavengers plan to attack the Earth for its resources. They first destroy the moon causing a series of tsunamis and earthquakes on Earth. As the humans recover from the natural calamities, the scavengers attack them, and a war breaks out between the two species. At last, humans eventually win the war using nuclear weapons. But as an aftermath, the Earth is no longer habitable as most of it turns into a radioactive wasteland. To survive, the humans evacuate to one of Saturn's moons called Titan. This evacuation is managed by officials, who inhabit a large spaceship in orbit around Earth called the Tet. Tet has also set up the hydro rig generators on the Earth. These are used to generate seawater and convert it into fusion energy for the humans in Titan. The last two people left on the Earth are a couple. The husband, Jack Harper, and the wife Vika live in a tower high above the clouds. They both work for the Tet and manage the hydro rig generators. Jack serves as Tech 49 whose job also involves repairing the drones, the device designed to detect and terminate remaining scavengers on Earth. Vika mostly stays inside the tower to keep an eye on him, as his coordinator. At the beginning of the movie, Jack wakes up to a dream of an unknown woman. He has been having recurring dreams for a long time. Jack narrates that he doesn't remember anything that happened before the war as their memories were erased for the mission's secrecy. The couple's mission on Earth will be over in two weeks, after which, they will join the others on Titan, leaving the Earth with no humans. They continue their normal morning routine after which, Jack leaves for the regular inspection of the scavenger killing drones. He sees that two of them have been damaged by the scavengers overnight. Meanwhile, Vika contacts the mission director from Tet named Sally. She is reported of everything going on Earth by Vika. Jack reaches the broken drone and lands to repair it while Vika helps him by monitoring the areas for scavengers. Jack successfully repairs the drone even though he is short of available equipment. The drone quickly flies away after scanning Jack and finding out he is not a threat. Jack then searches for the second drone, but is disappointed when Vika tells him that they have lost the beacon. Without the beacon, they have a hard time finding the drone, but an ambitious Jack gets on his bike to look for it. He drives through the plain lands that once used to be the oceans, and reaches a sinkhole. Jack locates the second drone inside it, but Vika asks him to leave because it is too dangerous. However, Jack ignores her and ties a rope to his bike to go down the hole. Seeing this, Vika requests the mission control to send a backup to his location. When Jack reaches the bottom, he sees the remains of an old building. He somehow gets to the drone but soon realizes that it is a trap set by the scavengers. They drag him by his leg but Jack uses his weapon and fights back. At last, he is almost killed but the backup drone arrives at the right time. It kills all the scavengers and saves Jack. After everything settles down, Jack returns home. Jack has been growing a flowery weed which he hands to Vika as a gift. To his disappointment, she throws it away saying that it might contain toxins. At dinner, Jack reveals that the scavengers were trying to capture him today. He is confused as to why they wouldn't want to kill him. Vika however dismisses the conversation and seductively invites him to the swimming pool. Jack joins her a while later, and the night ends as they kiss. The next morning, they wake up to the noise of a loud explosion. Jack quickly gets on his jet and makes his way to the area where the explosion took place. Sally calls Vika and tells her that one of the hydro rigs has had a meltdown and has been destroyed permanently. On his way to the scene, Jack receives a strange radio signal from an unknown source. It makes him curious, so he makes his way to the source of the said signal. He reaches the remains of the Empire State Building which he often visits in his recurring dream. Jack cuts a wire and gets rid of the signal. Then, he does a parameter check and almost crosses the border to the radiation zone where they aren't allowed to go. Before returning home, he goes to a house in the middle of the woods that he had found on one of his expeditions. He comes here whenever he feels down and has made the house his own with decorations. Jack eventually falls asleep and dreams of an unknown girl in the Empire State Building. A while later, he wakes up to see some sort of vessel falling from the sky and quickly gets in his jet. At the same time, Vika contacts him to inform him about the location of the vessel. Vika also contacts Sally who tells them to ignore the vessel because they have already gone through a lot of trouble for the day. 
Following the order, Vika asks Jack to return home, but he dismisses her and lands on the crash site. There, he notices that the capsule is a pre-war device. A confused Jack finds hibernation pods with humans inside them. He is more surprised to see that one woman inside the pod is the girl he always sees in his dreams. Before he can contemplate what is going on, a drone arrives there and starts shooting the hibernation pod, scanning them as scavengers. It destroys every pod, but Jack stops it from killing the girl. As he transfers the girl to take her home, some scavengers from nearby watch him. Back at the tower, Vika is surprised to see Jack with the hibernation pod. They quickly get the girl out of the pod and she calls Jack's name before passing out. Sometime later, she gains consciousness and introduces herself as Julie. Other than that, she doesn't tell them anything about her mission or her crew. While the three eat, Jack tells Julie about the war that caused the humans to evacuate the Earth. He says that Julie must have been in that pod for over 60 years, but the girl just laughs at the thought. Later at night, Vika tells Jack that she wants Julie gone. She wants to report her existence to the mission control and make them take her to Titan as well. However, Jack retaliates saying that the drones sent by mission control tried to kill her so asking them for help would be foolish. As they talk, a scavenger from below the tower keeps an eye on them. Then, we see Julie looking at the horizon through a window. She asks Jack to take her to her ship to retrieve the flight recorder. She feels like she is in a dream and has to know what happened to her crew before the crash. Jack hesitates, declaring that the scavengers are on a run at night, but Julie insists. At last, they fly to the site of the crash again. A distressed Vika waits for them at home, unsettled by her husband getting close to another woman. The other two reach the site and get the recorder. But before they can return, they are attacked and knocked out by the scavengers. Vika sees this from the cameras and freaks out. The following morning, she gets a call from Sally who asks her for reports. Vika doesn't tell her about Julie and makes up an excuse for Jack being absent. Meanwhile, Jack and Julie are tied up and taken to the scavenger's hideout. To Jack's surprise, a human being sits in front of him. The man introduces himself as Malcolm Beach and seems to recognize Jack. He asks Jack if he remembers the things from his past, but Jack says his memories were removed for his own good. Then, Beach questions him if he has seen a scavenger up close. Just then, the lights turn on and several humans standing on platforms are seen. Jack is surprised because he believed he and Vika were the only ones left on Earth. Beach finally tells Jack that the scavengers they have been killing are actually humans, and the mission control has been lying to him. The thought is unbelievable to Jack and he declares it to be a lie. Then, they take Jack to show him around the hideout and tell him about their mission. They want to destroy the Tet which is sucking out the Earth's resources. For this purpose, they have brought down Julia's ship Odyssey earlier. The ship had explosives that had the power to blow up the Tet. Now, they have the explosives, and they have a drone to plant the explosive, but the only one who can program the drone is Jack. Hence, they need his help. Jack, however, retaliates saying that the Tet has human beings up there who he cannot kill. An enraged sergeant threatens to kill Julia if Jack doesn't oblige. Right then, a drone arrives at the entrance of the hideout and scans it for scavengers. Beach takes Jack out of the second entrance and asks him to go to the radiation zone to find the answers. Jack and Vika have always been told to stay out of the radiation zone. At last Beach lets Jack and Julia go and they fly to the Empire State Building. There, Jack tells her about his dreams and to his surprise, Julia reveals she is his wife. Before everything went down, they were sent on a mission on a research flight to Titan. The crew consisted of five people in hibernation pods, while Vika and Jack were piloting the spaceship. But before they reached Titan, they discovered an alien object in space. That alien object was Tet. Julia has no memory of what happened after but Jack begins to remember the time he and Julia were in love. They get closer to kiss, but are interrupted by Jack's jet which has come to pick them up. Vika sees the two getting close through the cameras and is heartbroken. When Jack and Julia return to the tower, Vika doesn't let them in. She reports the mission control about Julia and tells them Jack is unfit for service. To their surprise, the mission control assigns a drone to kill both of them because they are of no use anymore. The drone kills Vika, but Jack is saved at the last minute. He and Julia run away from the tower only to be followed by the drones. They get into an intense battle in the sky, and their jet crash lands on the radiation zone. Jack composes himself and sees a jet flying overhead. 
To his utter surprise, another Jack comes out of the jet. Both of them are completely in shock to see each other. The only difference between the two is that Jack's code number is Tech 49, and the doppelganger's is Tech 52. They get into a fight and 49 quickly overpowers 52, but Julia is shot in the process. Jack thinks of ways to save her and gets on Tech 52's jet. He then flies to Tech 52's tower and meets his wife Vika. He acquires a healing device from the tower and comes back to Julia to save her. Jack cannot comprehend that behind the radiation zone is his doppelganger living the same life as him. He and Julia then drive to the lake house that Jack always visits. The following day, they return to the scavenger's hideout and meet Beach again. Beach finally reveals that Ted is actually an intelligent alien device that goes around the galaxy to steal resources from planets. It had its eyes on the Earth for a long time. The ship that Julia and Jack were in was attacked by Tet, but Jack managed to detach the capsule with the hibernation pods before he and Vika were captured. After that, Tet made several versions of Jack and Vika and sent them down to take over humanity. Their memories were wiped so they wouldn't question the mission, but Beach saw Jack save Julie and understood that he was different. He finally welcomes Jack back to the human side. Now, Jack repairs the drone that is supposed to take the explosive to Tet and destroy it. But before they can launch it, they are attacked by three other drones. A fight ensues between Beach's group and the drones in which most of their crew was killed. At last, Beach is gravely hurt and the drone they were supposed to launch is also destroyed. Now, Jack takes the responsibility to get the explosive to the Tet. Julie insists on joining him so he puts her in a hibernation pod, and the two take off for Tet. On his way, Jack listens to the flight recording that was retrieved from Julie's ship. While listening to it, he remembers what happened on the ship before they were captured. In the present, Jack finally reaches the Tet, and the doors open for him to enter. Inside, he sees thousands of Jacks being created in incubation pods. He finally comes before the Tet which is a triangular device. Jack then opens the hibernation pod in front of it only to reveal it has Beach inside of it. He had left Julie safe in the lake house and brought Beach with him so the Tet wouldn't suspect his intentions. He finally sets off the explosion and destroys the alien device, saving humanity and Earth's resources. However, both Jack and Beach die in the explosion. Cut to three years later, Julia has given birth to Jack's daughter and the two still live in the lake house. One day, they are approached by Beach's surviving crew. The crew has also brought Jack, Tech 52 with it. The movie ends as he meets eyes with Julia. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe the channel.